So in this video, I'm going to show you some absolutely fascinating drone tech. Now, uh, yesterday or uh, was it yesterday or the day before, I showed you this video about a Russian plot where they were going to have FPV drones deliver a can of corn that was filled with explosives. And this was a, a kind of a Russian plot to get into Poland and or Germany. And like this is this can happen like this kind of thing can actually take place. So FPV drones are are everywhere and it's changed the the landscape but it's not just fpv drones here nato's ruta has said that ukraine has become a powerhouse in innovation especially in drone warfare and cyber defense and it now helps denmark and poland and nato as a whole drone operators are in denmark and they are uh helping the uh helping nato understand what is going on or how to operate drones or how to defend against drones and that sort of thing and then we see that there are these kind of incursions from it, it looks like little drones were launched from the uh the, the shadow fleet and they were harassing in multiple european countries so bad things can be happening but good things can be happening as well. So here are ground-based drones. We are uh, being loaded with anti-mine uh, devices or uh, anti-mine explosives and being sent off so that a person doesn't have to get out there in front of a tank and be dropping those or, or other people in vehicles. Now, what we saw just... Uh, day before yesterday was this and a new modification to the Shahed drone with a night camera has uh, hit a moving train for the first time in a Cherniv region. Th this is uh, quite an innovation. Uh, for, now, when these Shaheds went out, they were first like it seemed like they were on a specific specific fixed target and they could only maneuver so much. And then they got faster and then they flew higher and then they got even faster uh, with going, going from a uh, prop to uh, some kind of jet engines like it, the innovation is going up first uh this the first drone it hit the locomotive that was moving like it, it, they're able to control these uh in a much more uh, efficient way than what they were able to do before and you can see this kind of thing here okay russian shot heads are striking these moving targets uh, again the ukrainian fuel train while it was moving at about 150 to 200 kilometers an hour from uh or uh, sorry 150 to 200 kilometers from the border it's the first strike that hit the locomotive and then other UAVs targeted tank cars. Okay, uh, the images that you can get out of drones are absolutely fascinating as well. Like this is this is watching the the view from a laptop of what's going on. You know, like the drone sneaking up on another drone, U Ukrainian FPV drone interceptor in the lens of a Russian reconnaissance drone. Uh, it's about to go up in a second. Now shooting down these drones has become very very difficult um or more difficult over time it's it's it was difficult at first and then it became easy and now it's difficult and but they're figuring out more anti-drone devices like this interceptor drone the sting interceptor and i'll show you another picture of that in a little bit it's small it costs something like two thousand dollars but again for a thirty five thousand dollar drone even if you're shooting a few of these and you generally have to to shoot down one shahed drone three interceptors are required per drone at the current rate, that's about 2,500 sorties per day. The scale is staggering, Ukrainian Air Defense Forces soldier told FP. So different weapons are, are used for different things. Like if you're looking for a ballistic missile, you got to use an attackum. You can knock down uh, other missiles or jets with uh, NASAMs. Uh, you can hunt these uh, Shaheds with a sting. And here's one sting, a sting anti Shahed drone developed by Wild Hornets in special combat livery for Ukrainian unit with a female commander and female drone operator. So uh, if they want to turn them pink, that's perfectly fine by me. That's <laughs> whatever. Now, the drone operators, the drone units are increasing significantly. They were like 1% to 2% of the Ukraine, 1.5, almost 2% of the Ukrainian army. And it voluntary recruitment begins on October 17th to 18th to reach 5% of defense forces. That's important. Why is it important? Well, uh, $1 invested in the anti-drone, uh, well, I'm sorry, not anti-drone.
drone. Drone units like the 414th uh, Magyar Birds returns $111 in destroyed Russian equipment or assets. So it, it's a great investment. And that they're moving to 5% of the defense forces, you're going to see outsized returns. They punch above their weight. I'm going to show you the most fascinating thing you've seen uh, this month. U.S. tested microwave weapon against drones. The Leonidas system disabled 61 UAVs in midair with single pulse, taking out 49 drones at once. Look at this. The system uses powerful microwave pulses to jam electronics and disable drone control. This isn't just like jamming them so they can't be on Wi-Fi. That's making them fall out of the sky. Look at this. The uh, manufacturer claims the attack is safe for people nearby. Leonidas has already attracted U.S. military interest, and the company has received contracts to deliver prototypes. Look at these are drones in the air, and they're going to be hit by that pulse, and then they're just going to drop. Look at that. I mean, that's that's just amazing stuff. <laughs> One more time. I, I, I could watch this kind of thing all day. It's fascinating. Look at them drop. Okay. Other drone technology and things that have happened with drones. This is a drone that's maneuverable or it can change from a, a vehicle to an aerial drone. I think we're going to see more of that kind of thing. This is in India, drone innovation at its peak, a drone which can run on wheels as well as fly with eight different configurations. Look at this guy go. I mean, it's, it's really just amazing what these drones are able to do now. And so drones are going to be good. They're going to be bad. They're going to be uh, positive. They're going to be negative. They're, they, will, they will light up the sky in a drone display, and they will also bomb cities. They're just, but this is the way of the future. These, these things are going to, we're going to see more and more of them. Okay, and if this car turning into a FPV kind of drone isn't interesting enough, uh, let me show you this. This is in China. An engineer, Maju Zhao, has developed a, a transformative aerial robot called the Dragon. Watch its skills here. Like it can do some pretty amazing things. It can. I mean, this is this is a drone flying in air, uh, it, it turn uh, like reconfiguring its shape, going through obstacles. Uh, I'll show you the going through the obstacles, and then uh, turning a uh, a. A pressure valve. Look at it going through the obstacles in in that various shape, carrying things, uh, reconfiguring on the spot into a different type of drone that's con that's going to lift off, pushing force, <laughs> turning a valve. It's just it's amazing what they can do. And nevertheless, we're going to end with this. This cat still thinks that a drone is a good thing to rub up on. <laughs> So some things never change. All right, my friends, that's all that I have. Thank you for the for watching this. And tell me what your thoughts are about what you've seen with drone innovation and where we're going in the future. Thank you for the time, the likes, the shares, and the subscribes. And thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.